Welcome back to Rob Schmidt tonight. Career prosecutors at the DOJ reportedly recommend against charging Congressman Matt Gates in a sex trafficking probe. A leak to the Washington Post, it appears officials questioned the credibility of the two witnesses that were central to the case. Biden's DOJ has not come to a final decision. It would be extremely rare, though, for them to ignore recommendations from these prosecutors. Congressman Gates has been under investigation for allegedly violating federal sex trafficking laws by paying for sex with a 17-year-old. That's the allegation. He denied it. According to the Federalists, this operation sidelined an effective Republican voice at a crucial time, saying, quote, from the article, the damage was already done by the initial report. That was the goal of the politicized leaks. Gates couldn't very well critique the Department of Justice for their political prosecutions if he was a pariah that everybody thought was a pedophile. And Congressman Gates joins us now to talk to us about what we see here and, and react to all of this. Um, you know, obviously, it's it's leaked out. Nothing's certain has happened yet. What do you, I mean, obviously, what do you make of it? And, and what's your message to your voters and to Floridians? Well, my family was the victim of a terrible crime. People tried to use lies to smear me. And when they were caught, they were prosecuted, sentenced. And now the person that led that series of lies is going to prison for five years. But the media was willing to fan these to eternity, to aggregate baseless, anonymous allegations against me to the moon. And I think back to when Project Veritas got a CNN director on tape saying that they knew they were propagandizing my life, but they were doing it because I was effective. I asked the most penetrating questions in Congress to leaders of our military, to leaders of the national security state. And those questions have to be asked. And I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to continue to serve my constituents before this reporting in the Washington Post. I had a primary election last month and 70 percent of the Republicans voted for me. And I'm as determined as ever to continue fighting for them and to fight for some reforms that we need to ensure that we have equitable justice across the board. Right. As far as the story goes, the, the, the girl in question, what, what, is, what is the story? I mean, I mean there, there, yeah. there is no such person, right? There is, there, there is, there is no such, uh, you know, evidentiary basis to any of these lies. The basis for the lies was an effort to try to shake down my family for money. And when that was exposed, that crime was ultimately prosecuted, charged, and resulted in a five-year prison sentence for the people that were doing my family harm. And so I'm, I'm glad that it took you know, probably longer than I would have hoped for the truth to come out. It hasn't been the easiest 18 months for me, right. but I'm glad that with the truth emerging, I'm able to focus more diligently on my work in the Congress. So, so obviously, it was, you say it was somebody that was trying to get money from you. The way, though, that it was, as you said, the media fanned the flames. Um, you know, if, 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 the, if the allegations, I mean... Is there a lawsuit coming there? Is there what do you what do you do in, in response? I'm taking counsel of all my options yeah. in the United States. If you say something about a public figure or someone in politics or in the United States Congress, there's a very high bar legally. And sure. I understand that. And, yeah. you know, there's there's a lot of my life now where I'm looking forward to the things ahead, not necessarily, you know, reliving this last experience. There's a lot of work to do if Republicans take the majority. And I expect we will. And I want to be central to that work and defining that agenda. And let's talk about that for a second. Obviously, a big election coming up in November. Everybody's talking about it. Um, just in the commercial break, you were saying you, you don't know. I mean, wh where do you think this thing lands? It could be tighter than a lot of people might think that maybe it's it's not such a huge win for Republicans. What, what I don't do you subscribe think? to the theory that this is going to be a unilateral red wave. I think there are cross currents right now in the electorate. Yeah. The response to the drop Dobbs decision is driving some voter enthusiasm. We see that on the ground. I see that in campaigns that I'm working on all around the country. So so we could be headed toward a majority that might be a little smaller than we would have otherwise anticipated. But that doesn't discourage me because uh, as a legislator and lawmaker, I've been a part of large majorities and small majorities. And I've seen small majorities work very cohesively as a team to accomplish shared objectives. And sometimes there's less of a likelihood for splinter groups and, and sure. different kind of uh, uh, competitive features to emerge within the conference. So maybe a small majority uh, would be something that uh, we could work with to get things done for the American people and to check an administration that's made a lot of bad decisions that's hurting folks. Congressman Gates, good to have you in the studio. Thanks, Thank you so much.